All right. Uh, good morning, afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining today. My name is Mark Smuckler. I am the co-founder and CEO at Bixby. We're a real estate technology company that makes it easy for property owners and managers to provide their tenants and residents with a great building experience. What I'm going to talk to you guys about today is what I call the property management pyramid of needs. And following along is the path of technological adoption. Essentially, what are the needs of property management? What has delayed the adoption of technology and led one of the biggest asset classes in the world to be such a laggard in adopting technology to create efficiencies? Um, but but what's, what's the reason? And what can we expect over the next 5, 10, 20 years to occur as it relates to technology's impact uh, in the real estate industry? So before I get started, a little bit more about myself. Uh, my name is Mark. I was born in Moscow in 1989, but raised in New Jersey. I graduated from New York University Stern School of Business in 2012. Uh, where I started, after which I started my career as a merger and acquisition analyst for a boutique investment bank in the U.S. called Stevens Inc., where I covered consumer, retail, and e-commerce um, mid-market companies. After leaving Stevens, after my analyst rotation, I went to study at General Assembly and participated in their web development immersive program, which is a three-month full-time full stack web development program, uh, after which I spent two years as a freelance web developer, coincidentally building a lot of websites for real estate owners and operators, uh, at which point one of my clients asked me to build them an easy to use mobile application to streamline communications, work orders, and payments with their tenant base. And that's how I got to where I am today. A little bit about Bixby. Uh, I mentioned we're a real estate technology company. We are a productivity tool for building operators and a virtual amenity for building occupants. We created an easy-to-use web and mobile platform that streamlines communications, work orders, payments, package notifications, document storage, employee scheduling, really anything as it relates to the tenant relations component of your property management business. At the same time, we operate as a virtual amenity for tenants by providing them access to a marketplace for on-demand services, uh, access to discounts and promotions in the local area from local vendors, uh, calendar of events in the community, the ability to reserve amenities, and so forth. So really a one-stop shop for anything that you might need for your building. What differentiates our product is that we're one of the most comprehensive solutions on the market. We integrate with many different product, hardware, software companies, to bring their, their services into one place. Uh, so that ranges from parking integrations to luxury concierge to uh, public information on public transportation, the ability to buy and sell goods from within your building and neighborhood, and of course, smart home and smart device integrations for access control, thermostats, smart locks, and so forth. We currently power over 2,000 properties across the U.S. and work with leading property management organizations like LNM, BH Management, Alliance, or Service. Uh, we say that we can power any property type or portfolio size. So we have owners and operators with a single condo investment uh, unit to large organizations with three, four, 5,000 uh, apartments or offices under management. And so let's get to the problem. Uh, the problem that we sought out to solve at Bixby is that, A, real estate is a very old school business. as one of the oldest industries in the world. And like I mentioned, still about the third largest asset class. But managing property is really hard work. Keeping track of tenants and building related activities is a hassle. Communicating through text, email, phone calls is tedious and disorganized. And overseeing a complex network of vendors and maintenance requests uh, can be challenging, and it often leads to forgotten repairs that cause unhappy tenants and high turnover. At the same time, tenants are more demanding than ever. 
uh, flexible leases, uh, efficient repairs, digital communications, connected systems, all of the comforts and conveniences that we have become so familiar with outside of our built environment, we're now demanding for in our homes and in our offices. And that's causing uh, a lot of pressure in the relationship between operators who have done things the same way for the last several centuries and certainly decades uh, versus a more discerning, younger, more millennial uh, tenant base. Okay, so I think we're all familiar with Maslow's Pyramid of Needs. Uh, Maslow created a framework to better understand how the human psyche progresses uh, and is motivated. And it's based on certain needs that must be met before you can move up the pyramid. Physiological, water, food. You need to have met those needs before you can think about safety. Uh, until you feel safe and secure, it's difficult for you to to feel a need for belonging and love. But once you feel secure, that's the emotion that you that starts to percolate more into a, esteem, and then uh, which is kind of a confidence or um, belief that you're making a, a contribution, and then self actualization, kind of the top of the pyramid, and so. In looking at the property management industry and why certain technologies have been so slow to proliferate, we applied this model and framework into the needs of the operator. And that's what we've called the property management pyramid of needs. And to lead you guys through from the bottom to the top, it starts with vacancy and leasing. The idea is if you have a real estate asset, you're not really thinking about anything else until you fill the space. If you don't fill the space, there's no point in thinking about payment collection because there's nobody there to pay. So the first need for a property manager is vacancy and leasing, and it's filling the space and putting it to work. Once you have filled the space, the next need that you're thinking about and considering is payment collection. Okay, I've gotten bodies, tenants into my property, those are my customers, those are my clients. Now I need to make sure that I can collect payment from them. So this is the second need. Once you're able to collect payments, you're gonna start thinking about main, the main, maintenance of the built environment. Uh, this is for a few reasons. One, so that you're not making large capital expenditures over time and using preventive maintenance techniques to make small fixes before they become larger issues but also to attract quality tenants and to put forth a good product. Once you are able to maintain your property, and so it's not completely falling apart, you can think about the service to your tenants, knowing that providing better service in all industries leads to better metrics, a better top line, a better bottom line. And so providing good service to your tenants will result in higher retention, which means less turnover, turnover being one of the largest contributors to operating expense on a operator's P&L. And then lastly, VA, which stands for value add. So things like smart devices, building a sense of community, facilitating communication across that community, that is the top of the pyramid. And those are things that you really will only think about once you have fulfilled the four needs prior. You're never gonna think about deploying smart sensors and smart devices in your property if you're not able to fill the space. You're never gonna think about providing great service to your tenants and communicating and being more responsive if your building is falling apart. And so this is how we applied the needs of the property manager to Maslow's framework for a pyramid of needs. So let's dive into each of these topics a little bit further. Need number one, vacancy and leasing, filling the space and putting it to work. Previously, operators relied on traditional brokerage houses, Douglas Elliman, Keller Williams, Century 21, Sotheby's, Remax, 
in a traditional agency structure. I'm an owner or an operator. I have a space. I'm going to hire this organization to fill it for me. The brokerage organization takes a commission for bringing in the body. Today, there are different avenues for distributing your supply. Zillow being one of the most known companies who has aggregated several different listing and distributor brands, uh, both here in the U.S. and globally, allows you to post a listing and distribute that to thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of individuals without necessarily relying on a brokerage and their viewer base uh, or their customer base. So it's significantly expanded the ability for an operator to spread or market the supply of their asset through a digital platform. And Zillow's job is to grab eyeballs and bring them and aggregate them to certain websites such that they can provide a valuable listing portal to the owner and operator. Nestio, a company who has allowed uh, organizations to create websites and track their own listing inventory, as well as take applications and lead prospects through the funnel. Uh, whereas previously, an operator would have to hire a web development agency uh, who would build a website that would show their properties but not necessarily allow a tenant to uh, communicate with the agents in-house or actually book a viewing and then go through the application process. Uh, Rumi, uh, uh, an even more disruptive product who is replacing the broker probably more than a Zillow or a Nestio by allowing individuals to find uh, listings peer-to-peer. -peer. So rather than an operator listing a unit on Zillow, a tenant can list their unit on Rumi and another tenant can find that, that unit uh, in more of a social network or peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, uh, really reducing the need for a broker and passing on significant cost savings to the operator. And then there are more tech-enabled brokerages like Compass, who we're all familiar with, uh, has raised a lot of money, backed by SoftBank, initially came to market to quote-unquote kill the broker. Uh, but what they found is that brokerage is a large and established industry, and it plays a very important part in the value chain uh, and, or, and or supply chain for owners and operators. So rather than replace the broker, they're going to use technology to make the process more efficient and be a, a better a better broker and pass those cost savings on to both shareholders and and stakeholders like clients and partners and VTS uh, listings management uh, another digital solution that didn't exist 20 years ago not even 10 years ago uh, allowing owners and managers to not only better market their product but stay more organized uh, internally and collect data on how well they're doing in terms of leasing uh, their, their property. So these are some of the new solutions and some of the benefits in adopting technology um, in the vacancy and leasing space. So we filled our property. It's 90% occupied. Now let's make sure that we can collect payments. This is probably a point where Technology and digitization has had even more of an impact than leasing and vacancy uh, because prior, you could really only take payments via two core uh, mediums or channels, which is cash and check. And the traditional still today, the majority of people do not pay through a digital platform. They pay by sending their check in the mail, uh, dropping off a check in the leasing office, uh, checked in an envelope or even money orders. So the, I think most of us use a digital form of payments in the majority of our lives, whether that would be Apple Pay or Google Pay directly from our phones or paying with a credit card when we're going to the local coffee shop or grocer, or obviously the proliferation of e-commerce and ordering everything from, from Amazon. Uh, similarly, I think today about 20% of 
of tenants in the U.S. pay their rent through a digital form of payment, uh, which is mind-boggling. And so there's several companies that have come to market over the last 20 years, even the last 10 years, that are facilitating the adoption of digital payments into the real estate market. Let's not forget that Payments is one of the most important, after leasing and vacancy, one of the most important components of operating a real estate asset. So if you are an organization who has potentially in their third, fourth generation and has been operating the business a very specific way over the history of the company, you have been adopting payments one of these old school ways of check and or cash. And that is how you know how to run your business. And it has likely worked for you. Uh, it's how your accounting processes are built off of this uh, model and method, the way you bill tenants, the way you send late fees and the late fees that you, that, that you add. Um, so switching to a digital form of payments is not a small task. If you are fortunate to be building your company from the ground up, acquiring your first property, winning your first management engagement, you have the luxury of looking at the landscape of technology that's available to you today and applying that into your business from the ground up. However, if you are a third, fourth, or even second generation owner or operator or manager, it can be much more difficult to take the million to $100 million in rental income that you're making any given month and suddenly apply a digital process to that, ensuring that it's convenient for the tenants and residents and that it can be accounted for properly by, by the mid and back office. So some of the uh, pieces of technology that have come to market include uh, Yardi, who we may all be familiar with. It's one of the largest accounting and lease management and real estate technologies in the U.S., privately held still. Um, and their core product today is called Voyager. And it is primarily an accounting system. So as previously, organizations may have been using Excel or later on likely QuickBooks or products similar, uh, Yardi came to market with an accounting platform that is specifically geared towards the real estate operation. And uh, for example, for owners in New York City, there is a rent control and stabilization module that helps you keep up with the different permitting uh, and billing protocols established by the state government uh, as it relates to stabilized and controlled units. Uh, Entrada, a newer product, uh, still a large company, exceeding $100 million in annual revenues, uh, competing with Yardi as a cloud-based solution uh, and a comprehensive one that offers products ranging from leasing and applications, credit and background checks, to accounting for the mid and back office, to a tenant portal for communicating and processing rent payments and maintenance requests. Uh, Resman, a similar product with a very open API and integration network. And then more specific products for payments, which are Yapstone, PayLease, and ClickPay. Products that will facilitate payments, uh, but still rely on a separate accounting platform for bank reconciliations and so forth. Uh, so these are some of the new technologies that can facilitate payments. Then to give you a sense of the kind of impact that this can have uh, or applying a technology like this can have on your operation, uh, the general uh, consensus is that processing a paper check costs about $1.22 per check, um, including uh, the materials involved in sending out the bill, the individual who has to process the check, take it to the bank, and so you can save yourself a significant amount of money over volume if you adopt a payment, a digital payment gateway like a ClickPay or like a Bixby where your payments are less than 50 cents per transaction. 
So moving on to the next need, now that we have our space filled and we're able to collect payments, we have to make sure that we're maintaining the built environment. Uh, previously, this was done with phones, faxes, emails, texts, and a very complicated network of vendors. Uh, today, there's products like Bixby's, like Building Link, Active Building, Rent Cafe, which are called or considered tenant portals to facilitate facility management um, and help you streamline the flow of maintenance issues and repairs that your tenants or residents are having through a digital platform where you can update the status of a request, set it to complete, assign it to employees, add it to a calendar, and then view analytics on how responsive your team is being uh, on both on a building level and an employee level, as well as drilling down on what specific issue types a building is facing. The benefits of using these kinds of products fall under the concept of preventive maintenance, which essentially says that if you get out in front of issues before they become bigger problems, uh, you will not only provide a better experience to the occupants, but end up saving yourself significant uh, funds in, in, your maintenance, uh, in your maintenance expense, uh, because you will make smaller repairs before they become larger issues that require significant capital expenditures. Some of the benefits here, besides uh, including some of the ones I mentioned, uh, staying more organized, increased transparency, increased accountability in knowing what repairs your team is working on, how many they've done, and how well they're interacting with your tenants and residents, um, as well as lowered maintenance costs. We, we estimate that a single maintenance request through a platform like Bixby uh, removes the need for five or six phone calls. The initial phone call to the super, the, the phone call to the management office when the super doesn't answer, the phone call from the manager to the super, from the super back to the tenant. Um, and this kind of tele game of telephone, if you will, can really be reduced if, as a tenant, I can place a maintenance request through an app, which gets distributed to all of the management side users, including any supers and staff members, who can then update the status, which notifies both the tenant and the manager of the status of the request, allowing the manager to assign the request to a specific employee and send reminders, as well as to over time track what the status of that request is uh, and be able to, to remind the team over time if, for example, a request has been outstanding for a significant amount of time. Uh, plus to track expenditures related to maintenance issues and being able to bill those back to the appropriate owner or to the tenant um, and so forth. So lots of externalities, lots of benefits of adopting a digital platform for uh, coordinating your maintenance efforts. So moving on up the pyramid, our built environment is in good shape. Uh, there's, we don't have a ton of leaks, we have hot water, and the roof isn't falling down. So let's make sure and we're collecting payments and the space is filled. So now let's make sure that we're providing great service because a slight increase in responsiveness is the biggest way to impact your turnover and your tenant retention. And very simply, if you provide better service, you will have happier customers or tenants, and they will stay with you longer. There is not a business in the world where providing a worse experience to customers creates a better bottom line or a better business. So I think it's important to focus on customer service. Uh, previously, you could rely on resident management organizations or concierge providers like Abigail Michaels. Right. Uh, had a relatively large business here in New York before being acquired by Live Unlimited, who is a newer brand. And then you have companies like planned companies who provide security, concierge, maintenance personnel for a management organization. Um, I don't, it's, I wouldn't say that those companies are not relevant today. Uh, planned companies essentially is a staffing organization. And if you need security for your property, 
it does make a lot of sense to go with a company like Planned over hiring those individuals in-house and having to manage them as your direct resources. However, there are a lot of companies uh, today that either augment their capabilities and capacity or replace them or uh, provide additional services and expand the offering beyond what a building or these kinds of companies traditionally provided. So for example, um, Live Unlimited is an amenity manager and concierge provider who is building their own platform and uses the Bixby platform in several of their projects to facilitate their services. Previously with Abigail Michaels, they provided an on-site concierge individual who you could call down or you can go down to the lobby and speak with the individual like you would at a hotel. Using a platform like Bixby, you can send a request, whether it be for a restaurant reservation or uh, tickets to an event or travel arrangements through the platform, and it will still be fulfilled by a concierge individual on their side, but again, reduces the need for picking up the phone and calling somebody and explaining my situation uh, rather than submitting that through uh, an app, whether I'm on my way home or sitting at home, and then being able to pick up the conversation and, and get on the phone if necessary for additional detail. Uh, organizations like TF Living who provide dog walking, housekeeping, as well as fitness classes and events, really going beyond what a traditional manager or building was responsible for or expected to provide without you having to provide those services themselves um, or you as an operator. Uh, TF Living and their team are experts in yoga, fitness, uh, dog walking, and, and really providing service to tenants and residents. And so as an operator, you can rely on their expertise and save a considerable amount uh, rather than versus uh, hiring those individuals in-house. And then, of course, there's companies like Hello Alfred, who, while relatively or rather expensive, uh, do provide a significant value, I think, specifically for Class A luxury properties, where they will basically be a virtual assistant for you. Uh, you will have an Alfred who can bring your groceries and put them into your fridge, uh, take your dry cleaning, uh, even do housekeeping, uh, bring packages into your unit, and really provide a very high level of service. And then uh, platforms like Bixby and Modern Message, which help you engage residents, create a sense of community, facilitate their interaction with the built environment through a digital platform, all increasing their comfort and their convenience. So moving right along, I think I've got somebody chatting with me. Gotcha, all right, so uh, need number five, value add. Um, contribute and connect to your community in unique ways. Um, Companies like Transit Screen, Stratus, IOTIS. So these are smart devices, sensors, community building, things that you're only thinking about once you're providing great service, the built environment's maintained, um, and uh, you're collecting payments and the building is full. Stratus, IOTIS, IoT deployment for the building from thermostats to smart locks. Uh, Envoy providing car sharing services to a specific property and transit screen allowing you to view information on public transportation. All products that we integrate with and bring into the Bixby environment. And I'm most definitely out of time. I think um, there, if there are any questions, I'm happy to open up the floor. I'm sure you guys have put the pieces together that uh, the pyramid of needs reflects the path of technological adoption. So. Once you have fulfilled vacancy and leasing and applied technology to that business, you can start to think about payment collection and applying technology there all the way through value add and the deployment of smart devices and building community. Uh, I'll leave this summary of trends here. Um, I'll also share this deck with Wooter and his team so that they can send it around. And here's my contact information. Thanks everyone so much for the time. Uh, 
uh, looks like one question, when is Bixby coming available to Europe? Uh, we're currently working with an organization in the UK to open a subsidiary there. So that'll be our first move into the European market, uh, followed shortly by France. And we're very excited for the opportunities available in Europe and to work with the great forward thinking operators, operators there. Can you show the last slide of companies? Here are some of the companies. I'll also put one slide together that has all of the different logos of these organizations. And when I send it to Wouter, he can distribute that so you guys can, can have it for reference as well. And of course, feel free to reach out to me at any time if you have any questions on some of these different technologies, companies, softwares. Uh, we've integrated with most of them. We're friendly with all of them. And we're happy to share our insights into what might work for you. Sure, so a question from Aaron. Are you more involved in commercial or residential assets? Uh, our primary focus is residential. Uh, the history of our company, I'd mentioned that I built the product for one of my clients when I was still running a development agency. Uh, his assets, about 3,000 units in New York City, are all Class B non-doorman, uh, all rental, residential. And so the deliverable for him was, how do I provide a better experience without making significant capital expenditures and changing the built environment? Meaning, I have a building in the West Village where tenants are paying relatively high rents. Uh, there's a Class A building being developed across the street that has laundry and in-unit washer dryers, a beautiful gym, a beautiful lounge. How do I compete with that building and maintain rents and retention without building a laundry room into my building, without renovating the rooftop and making it into a lounge? And so where we really tried to fill the void was acting as a digital platform to facilitate better service without needing to make those capital expenditures connecting tenants to local dry cleaners and providing them with discounts over building washers and dryers in every unit or building a laundry room into the building. Uh, so that's really where we came from. Today, I mentioned we serve a little over 2,000 properties across the U.S. and Canada. About 80% of those are residential properties, uh, but we are used in commercial assets as well because the ecosystem is really the same. Tenants who need to get building announcements, order services, make rent payments, submit maintenance requests. Uh, so, like I mentioned, we see our products available for all property types and portfolio sizes, ranging from single family homes to large commercial assets. Uh, some of the buildings that we work with on the commercial side are the Brooklyn Army Terminal, as well as the Seabold Building in Miami. And, and several others, both in New York City uh, and elsewhere. Uh, but the other 80% of the properties that use our product are residential. And I actually split pretty evenly there between condos and co-ops and HOAs versus multifamily rentals. I'm going to hang out for a few more minutes. So if anyone has any questions, uh, definitely feel free. I'll, I'll be here until Wouter kicks me out. Uh, but I'll leave my contact information here. Uh, you can reach me directly at my email, and I'm happy to set up a time for, for a conversation. South America. Uh, yeah, we have a question whether Bixby's coming to South America. Also a very interesting market for us. Um, we're a team of about 12 individuals today, uh, six of which are based in the U.S., and the other six are based in Argentina and Colombia. Uh, so it's definitely a market we're familiar with and we're looking closely and um, hopefully in 2019 I'll have better news about our expansion plans to, to South and Latin America and Chile most definitely also my roommate is from Santiago so hopefully we'll be there soon <laughs>